Many prominent competitors did the strike. Постоянно стараются пролезать в ноги, но вот на противника, ну пока в общем в арм файтинге дела. Press tested the ring surface. Начал с соперника стряхнул. And dished out a hefty serving. Единственное, ого, ого, ну нельзя надо закрываться, ну как? Три. Опять Хабиб. Да, приятно смотреть на Хабиба. Очень жесткий удар да, пропускает. Да, Обоюдный захват и смотрите. Habib Nurmagomedov. Despite Habib's enormous popularity and the millions of eyes that have watched his UFC career, there are still gaps in the Eagles' early flight. We have compiled rare footage and all of Nurmagomedov's performances, many of which did not make it into the official record to find out how one of the most dominant fighters in history was forged. As Habib himself likes to point out, he took his first steps in the gym, training under the guidance of his father, Abdul Manap, from a young age. Nurmagomedov Jr. grew up under Spartan conditions in the small mountain village of Kiravaul. I sold the four bowls to set up the very gym where it all started. When he was 11 years old, the Nurmagomedov family moved to the capital of Dagestan, Makhachkala. Abdul Manap rented a place, refurbished it a bit, and started teaching combat sambo. However, the son did not end up on his father's A-team immediately. In order for Habib to get used to grappling in a jacket, Abdul Manap initially enrolled him in judo. Later, the Eagle expressed interest in Wushu Sanda, and only at the age of 16 did he focus on combat sambo. In 2005, Abdul Manap took Habib to a training camp for the first time and put him through the ringer. According to the Eagle, this was a lot of pain, perseverance, hardships, and small victories over himself. After successfully passing the challenge, Nurmagomedov started actively competing in combat sambo. Wearing a jacket, Habib won over a hundred matches. Although he would go on to conquer the world championship twice, losses were also part of the journey. The most bitter one took place during the 2008 Russian Championship Final. The match was tightly contested on the feet. With Habib failing to secure a single takedown. Just like his adversary. They were even on points, so the judges decided the outcome, siding with the red corner. When the verdict was announced, the young Nurmagomedov couldn't hold back his emotions. At the same time, watching Fedor at tournament, the Dagestani worked his patented game, shooting lightning-fast takedowns. The weapon of choice on the floor was ground and pound. He fought three times in a span of one and a half hours, smashing all the opposition with confidence. After the victory, Nurmagomedov was given a microphone and got confused for the first time that night. In 2009, Habib performed on home soil a couple of times, and was subsequently noticed by the largest Russian promotion, M1. They matched him up against the national Muay Thai champion and the future Bellator Grand Prix winner, Shahbulat Shamalayev. He is still he is in the set! That is it! That is over! It's in! It's Habib's walk-off to the music of Rammstein, which was chosen by the organizers, turned out to be a memorable one. Shamhalayev enthusiastically pressed forward with left hooks. The Eagle was not going to trade punches with the elite striker and executed a trip. Shahbulat wasn't new to grappling either and successfully countered Khabib's attempt to take mount. From underneath, Nurmagomedov constricted his favorite triangle, switching to an arm lock in the process. Again, by the way, 
Once on top, the eagle hammered in a couple of nails and went for a limb. The foe showed lots of grit. Yet the sambo wrestler did not let the arm go this time. According to Habib, this victory is one of the most valuable in his whole career. The Eagles record improved to 7-0 in the span of a year. Talent, desire, perseverance, all these factors contributed. But discipline remained the foundation. Under his father's watchful eye, Habib lived in constant pursuit of self-improvement. By the end of the 2000s, a new generation of Abdul Manap students had matured. As MMA gained in popularity, young sambo wrestlers ended up in the ring more and more often. Among them was the reigning UFC champion, Islam Makhachev, Nurmagomedov's main sparring partner from early on. Sweating in a cramped gym, both had little idea of what lay ahead. The training is over. To my right is Islam Makhachev. He is prepared for the world championship in combat sambo. In the summer of 2010, Habib competed in the welterweight division against the future ACB champion and grappling world champion Ali Bagov. At the start, Nurmagomedov ran into a takedown, but reversed the position pretty quickly. On top, he would rain down headbutts, which was legal. The Dagestani put the experienced wrestler into an endless defense cycle. Вовлекает вот в такое положение, положение обороняющегося. Нурмагомедов работает сверху, работает активно и головой, наконец... And took an important victory by decision. Он продолжает свою беспроигрышную серию. Three months later, he returned to M1. Spending the beginning portion on the feet, by the 32nd mark, Нурмагомедов got back to his usual strategy. Представник Кавказу себя почувает Хабиб Нурмагомедов. When the armbar attempt failed, he decided to go the rough way. Following an avalanche of unanswered blows, the eagle pressed his forearm into the guy's throat, achieving a bully-style stoppage. Appearing in the arena with pomp, in his 10th performance, Habib clashed against Pankration world champion Alexander Agafonov. The Dagestani phenom was getting chewed up with low kicks at the outset, but made the adjustments and came up with an answer on the fly. Nurmagomedov looked like a bulldozer on the mat. Never relieving the pressure for a second. By round three, the opponent got tired polishing every corner of the ring with his back and politely refused to continue. In the spring of 2011, the 22 year old Habib signed a deal with the Russian League Pro FC. It was the most promising promotion in the post Soviet region at the time, one that would produce many prominent competitors. The first contract mentioned the name Said Khalilov, whose track record included over 25 fights. Nurmagomedov stress tested the ring surface and dished out a hefty serving. After smashing into side control, he immediately snatched a Kimura. 
Пошел борьба прием есть, есть, есть. Хо -хо, вот это да. A month later, the promotion matched up the Eagle with a newcomer, Ashot Shahinyan. Facing a freestyle wrestler, Khabib elected to strike. В ноги, но вот с ударкой беда. Вот сняла наконец-то себя вот эти борцовские. He could sense the finish coming and did not take his foot off the gas. Таким-то образом там пытаться что-то с тобой сделать, но здесь, конечно, нет. Но очень много ударов уже Ашот получил. Сваливается, не получается. Мурмагомедов не собирается сейчас слезать своего оппонента, полез туда домолачивать своего противника. Ну, пока, в общем... Giving the enemy some space for a moment, Nurmagomedov leaped in with a hook and called on the referee to intervene. In his third outing under the Pro FC banner, Khabib battled Kajik Abajan, whose record of 1-1 one one left much to be desired. The announcer called Nurmagomedov bad boy, which made him smile. Bad boy! The antagonist welcomed Habib with a hard counter. So the bad boy decided not to engage in a kickboxing battle. In accordance with the game plan, Nurmagomedov assembled an armbar. But couldn't create the desired angle and effortlessly switched to a triangle. With 13 wins in a row, Khabib has developed into one of the best lightweights in the country. With the goal in mind of making it to the U.S., he continued to improve his record. In 2006, Hamis Mamedov had defeated Nurmagomedov in a combat sambo tournament, and now, five years later, it was time for revenge. The Eagle delivered a hook, grabbed a tight body lock, and wished his man a pleasant flight. Dragging the duel into deep waters, he seamlessly moved to the mount and drowned the offender in the Bermuda Triangle. A few weeks later, Habib returned to the front line. The opposite corner was occupied by Vadim Sandulski, the champion of Moldova in combat sambo, who was making his professional MMA debut. He perfectly knew what Nurmagomedov was going to do, but he could do nothing about it. With little resistance, the Dagestani progressed to his favorite position. Framed off the victim and locked the third triangle in a row. By the end of 2011, Khabib was on the verge of signing with the UFC awaiting the last test before crossing the ocean. It came in the face of Ari Marcel Chocolate Santos, a vet with almost three times more experience. The Brazilian opened up the bout with multiple kicks and shot in with an unexpected takedown. Nurmagomedov used the ropes to his advantage and had a point deducted for it. As soon as the meeting resumed, the eagle floored the impudent foe. He must have been imagining himself in a Las Vegas arena while getting the job done. In the first three years of his professional career, Habib fought 16 times and never met his equal once. After running through the local scene, he signed a contract with UFC. The list of Russian fighters in the ultimate promotion before him, one could count on the fingers of one hand. Daktarov, Zinoviev, Suloyev, Semyonov, Chalangov. 
But since Nurmagomedov arrived, a litany of athletes from ex-Soviet countries joined the roster, many of whom now occupy the higher ranks of multiple divisions. Having traveled an incredible journey from a small mountain village to worldwide stardom, the Nurmagomedovs not only earned respect for their style and brought glory to Dagestani wrestling, but also paved the way for other fighters from Russia and neighboring countries. That impact cannot be overestimated. <laughs> If you enjoyed the video and want to see more rare footage of iconic fighters, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel.